uh, well, uh, your question, Salvo, was about uh, Exactly, new social conflicts around. So, well, first of all, maybe one thing that I want to say is that one idea that the xenophobic you know, narratives have been able to sell to a lot of people is the very idea of the paradise. No? A, a American writer, Rebecca Solnit, has written a very nice book with the title more or less like uh, um, Gate of Paradise, I think could be the title. And in the, in the book she said that what makes the paradise is precisely the wall. A bri a, any bri a breach in the wall is actually jeopardizing the paradise. And, the and you can see the wall only when you are outside the paradise. No? So in the book she said that basically, uh, you know, in the biblical nar narration, Adam and Eve, they saw the wall only when God decided to uh, get them outside of the paradise. So at that point they were able to see the world. So the idea with the xenophobic narrative is that the paradise needs wall, borders. And the only way to have the paradise is to have, to enforce this these walls and these borders. This is also very fun in a sense because globalization is all about being global without borders, you know, everything must be must flow around. But what is interesting about the capitalistic uh, globalization is that everything can go around, can flow, if, uh, but not people, basically. So goods, money, xenophobic discourses, rich people, the elite, and so on and so forth, they can travel around the world. What cannot travel is people. What cannot travel is poor people. What cannot be moved and cross the border is what they would call like uh, unfit or unwanted bodies, the bodies of migrants. And I think that this is interesting because it's basically uh, uncovering this, the, um, how can I say, the hypocrisy of the globalization narrative. And I think that this is important to, to repeat always that everything can move around the world but people, but migrants. The other thing that I, I would like to say is that in this uh, you know, idea that the wall is making paradise is that actually uh, the paradise does, uh, doesn't exist for most of the people. And it's really an illusion. The xenophobic narrative is selling a very easy us. The we is a very easy we, but actually this we doesn't exist because it's actually the we of the elite, it's the we of the people which, uh, are the, those who can actually make profit out of these borders, of this wall, of this impossibility to cross and trespass. This is, I mean, uh, now, uh, I don't know about Italy, but in many countries in Europe, the, the, you know, the mainstream discourse is that rich people can afford to be welcoming. So, you know, it's a little bit like environmentalism. So many times they say, of course, Richard Gere, sure, of course, you know, some Hollywood star can be welcoming, but not us, because we are fighting for social housing, for hospitals, for jobs. We cannot afford to be welcoming. This was said precisely in the same way about environmentalism. No, for a long time, it was said that only those who have the fully bell Belli, sorry, can be environmentalist. Then Joan Martinez Salier, Ramachandra Gua, two very, I think, relevant scholars, I, 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 I guess that you would agree with me, they came up with this idea that they call the environmentalism of the poor. And the idea was that, you know, it's not true that you need to be rich in order to care for the environment. Actually, generally speaking, the rich are destroying the environment and the poor are trying to, uh, you know, to, 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 to protect it because the environment for them is not a place where to go in the, in the weekend to enjoy yourself and do a little bit of hiking, but it's actually their home and the place where they can get you know, their survival, the means of their survival. So in the, I think that there is something connected also with welcoming and solidarity. The fact that we are in a shitty situation with social housing, hospital, public school, doesn't mean that we need to be xenophobic. The, the point is, that, is, is to fight together with migrants for social housing, jobs, hospital, and better school. I mean, Putting, putting a wall around your neighbor will not make you rich, will just make you stupid.
<laughs> and so it's the, 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 the very, the very the, the, I think that the challenge is to, to go back to the idea that Joan Martin Salier Ramachandra Gua uh, put out many years ago. It's not true that you need you know, to be rich to, to, to change and to, you know, to afford, for instance, environmentalist culture or welcoming. I, 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 I don't like so much to, you know, this idea of welcoming because I, I, I think that solidarity is much more interesting for me. I am not actually wel welcoming anybody. I am more you know, f you know, begging people to come and help me to fuck capitalism rather than you know say you're yeah, sure I can help you who are migrants I really hope that you know they will come and they will help us to overthrow the capitalism in this country and everywhere because trespassing migration is first of all a, is a revolutionary practice sabotaging the nation state you know challenging the border believing that the nation is not my home my home is my class my home is be here with the people who believe in the same dream that I have which is a more eco-socialist, eco-feminist society. This is my home. I cannot care less the language that you are speaking. I, I am not interested in this. So, uh, and this is my last point. Uh, a few, actually, a few weeks ago, uh, you know, I was invited in a round table on capitalism, communism and environmentalism. I think I had the flag, the red flag, right? So they invited, you know, the poor crazy guy to, and I mean, of course they wanted to trap me in a very stupid and, you know, very old school debate. So, you know, basically I, I was supposed to defend, you know, uh, the Soviet, you know, countries in Eastern Europe, you know, I don't know what bullshit they were. And the point I said was, you know, I, my horizon, horizon is actually uh, the Zapatistas. 11 new municipalities free by the Zapatistas last week. My, my or, or, horizon is not Romania, it's Rojava, the most advanced <laughs> democracy in the, uh, in the world. Because you know, you cannot, you cannot fight against capitalism if you don't fight ag against patriarchy, which is in my mind, you know, even if I try to be a good guy, you know, 2,000 years of patriarchy is all here, and, and, and fight against racial capitalism. If you don't understand this, you, you, you cannot, you know, free yourself, because, you know, uh, coloniality is inside us. If you, we, I mean, Angela Davis, she used it to say, you know, that the, the first struggle we need, we need to do is to free ourselves from the colonial project. But the, somebody, I was saying this, and so I said, you know, this is my dream. This guy in the panel said, you know, if you have dreams, if you have vision, you need to see a good doctor. And, you know, I think that I'm fine with this. I mean, I don't like to be normal. You know, in the name of normality, the worst thing has been, has been done in this world. So, good for me. I am going to see a doctor, but after the doctor, we are going after you, and we will take this world. <laughs>